Hi, this video is about base rate neglect. The base rate is the probability of an outcome unconditional on any evidence. For example, if 1% of the population has COVID-19 and the remainder doesn't, the base rate of COVID-19 is 1%. If you were to obtain evidence that someone has COVID-19, such as a positive COVID-19 test, you would use that base rate in determining the conditional probability that they have the disease. Base rate neglect is the failure to consider an event's base rate when making a judgment. One illustration of base rate neglect comes from the cab problem from Tversky and Kahneman, 1982. It involves the following story. A cab was involved in a hit and run accident at night. Two cab companies, the green and the blue, operate in the city. Participants are given the following data. 85% of the cabs in the city are green, 15% are blue. A witness identified the cab as blue. The court tested the reliability of the witness under the same circumstances that existed on the night of the accident and concluded that the witness correctly identified each one of the two colors 80% of the time. What is the probability that the cab involved in the accident was blue rather than green. In the experiment, the median and modal answer was 80%. The correct answer is 41%. The experimental result indicates confusion between conditional probabilities. The experimental participants were confusing the probability of the witness identifying a blue cab, given that the cab was blue, with the probability of the cab being blue given that the witness identified it as blue. However, we need to use Bayes' rule to calculate the probability of the cab being blue, given that the witness identified it as blue. The experimental subjects effectively neglected the rarity of blue cabs. A witness seeing a blue cab is representative of what would occur if the cab were blue. The correct answer is as follows. The probability that the cab is blue, given the witness claimed the cab is blue, is equal to the probability that the witness claims the cab is blue, given the cab is blue, multiplied by the probability that the cab is blue, divided by the total probability of claiming that a cab is blue. That equals the probability that the witness claims the cab is blue, given the cab is blue, multiplied by the probability that the cab is blue, divided by the probability that the witness claims the cab is blue, given the cab is blue, times the probability that the cab is blue, plus the probability that the witness claims the cab is blue, given the cab is not blue, times the probability that the cab is not blue. Substituting in the values for each probability, that equals 0 0.8 times 0 0.15 on 0 0.8 times 0 0.15, plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.85, which equals 0 0.41. We can also see base rate neglect in the context of diagnosing a rare disease. Consider the following problem. You test yourself for COVID-19. The following information is known. The probability that a person has COVID-19 is 1%. The prevalence. If a person has COVID-19, the probability that they test positive is 90%, the sensitivity. If a person does not have COVID-19, the probability that they nevertheless test positive is 9%, the false positive rate. You test positive. What is the chance that you have COVID-19? When problems of this nature are given to physicians, around 10 to 20% reason, using Bayes' rule, for example, see Hofraj et al., 2015. The most common answers approximate the sensitivity, 90% for this example. As for the cab problem, there is confusion between the conditional probabilities. The probability of having COVID-19, given they have tested positive, does not equal the probability of testing positive, given they have COVID-19. One hypothesis for this error is that a positive test is representative of someone with COVID-19. As a result, the test is given greater weight than the more general information about the base rate. The correct answer is 
the probability of having COVID-19, given they have tested positive, equals the probability that they test positive, given they have COVID-19, multiplied by the probability that they have COVID-19, divided by the total probability of testing positive. That in turn equals the probability that they test positive, given they have COVID-19, multiplied by the probability that they have COVID-19, divided by the probability that they test positive, given they have COVID-19, times the probability that they have COVID-19, plus the probability that they test positive, given they do not have COVID-19, times the probability that they do not have COVID-19. Substituting the probabilities into the equation, this equals 0 0.9 times 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.9 times 0 0.01 plus 0 0.09 times 0 0.99, which equals 0 0.092. Let us reconsider this medical problem with an alternative representation. This representation uses natural frequencies. You test yourself for COVID-19. The following information is known. 10 in every 1,000 people have COVID-19, the prevalence. Of these 10 people with COVID-19, 9 will test positive, the sensitivity. Of the 990 people without COVID-19, about 89 nevertheless test positive, the false positive rate. You test positive. What is the chance that you have COVID-19? Seeing a representation in this manner makes the base rate and the rate of false positives much more salient and leads to more accurate estimates of the conditional probabilities. We can see that the probability that we have COVID-19 given we tested positive for COVID-19, equals the number of people who have COVID-19 who have tested positive, divided by the total number of positive tests, which equals 9 divided by 9 plus 89, which equals 0 0.092. Cosmides and Tubi, 1996, first proposed using natural frequencies in this way. We derive natural frequencies by observing cases representatively sampled from a population. Hofrage and Gigerenza, 1998, reported that this change in representation increased the proportion of correct answers among physicians from 10% to 46%. There is evidence that you can get further gains through a frequency tree representation, for example, Spiegelhalter and Gage, 2015. Below is one such tree from Gigerenza, 2011, which they compare with a tree using conditional probabilities. The numbers at the bottom of the conditional probability tree do not contain the base rate information. You can't simply compare them to calculate conditional probabilities. You need to refer to the middle layer. Conversely, the natural frequency tree contains all you need to calculate the conditional probability in the bottom row. To illustrate this point, consider what happens if we convert the numbers at the bottom of the conditional probability tree into frequencies, 900 in 1,000, 10 in 1,000, 90 in 1,000, and 910 in 1,000. Gigerenza calls these simple frequencies. While simple frequencies can make a problem more tractable, they do not allow us to calculate conditional probabilities. Simple frequencies are just a restatement of the probabilities. In contrast, natural frequencies are joint frequencies, such as the number of people who test positive and who have COVID-19. The following example provides another illustration of the use of Bayes' rule and natural frequencies. You are trying to spot a rare type of bird, the Darwin finch. It looks very similar to the Wallace finch, except for a slight difference in the shape of its beak. You know the following about the finches in your area. 99% of the finches are Wallace finches. The remaining 1% are Darwin finches. 
If you spot a Darwin Finch, you will correctly identify it as a Darwin Finch 95% of the time. The other 5% of the time, you identify it as a Wallace Finch. If you spot a Wallace Finch, you will correctly identify it as a Wallace Finch 95% of the time. The other 5% of the time, you identify it as a Darwin Finch. You spot a Finch and identify it as a Darwin Finch. What is the probability that the Finch is a Darwin Finch? First, I use Bayes' rule to calculate the probability. The probability that the Finch is a Darwin Finch, given you identified it as a Darwin Finch, equals the probability that you identify a Finch as a Darwin Finch, given it is a Darwin Finch, times the probability that the Finch is a Darwin Finch, divided by the total probability of you identifying a Finch as a Darwin Finch, which equals the probability that you identify a Finch as a Darwin Finch, given it is a Darwin Finch, times the probability that the Finch is a Darwin Finch, divided by the probability that you identify a Finch as a Darwin Finch, given it is a Darwin Finch, times the probability that the Finch is a Darwin Finch, plus the probability that you identify a Finch as a Darwin Finch, given it is not a Darwin Finch, times the probability that the Finch is not a Darwin Finch, which equals 0.95 times 0.01 divided by 0.95 times 0.01 plus 0.05 times 0.99, which equals 0.16. The probability that it is a Darwin Finch is 16%. Next, I use natural frequencies to calculate that same conditional probability. Suppose there are 10,000 finches. That would mean there are 100 Darwin finches and 9,900 Wallace finches. If I spotted these 100 Darwin finches, I would identify 95 as Darwin finches. If I spotted a Wallace finch, I would identify 0.05 times 9,900 equals 495 as Darwin finches. That means 95 of the 95 plus 495 equals 590 birds I identify as Darwin finches would be Darwin finches. Therefore, the probability that a finch is a Darwin finch, given I identified it as a Darwin finch, is 95 divided by 590, which equals 0 0.16. Note that in this example, I have started with a number of finches, 10,000, which allows me to avoid fractions and small decimals. If I started with only 100 finches, I would later be talking about an unintuitive 4.95 finches. If you are using natural frequencies to solve a problem of conditional probability, you should choose a large enough number to avoid complicated fractions and decimals. Alternatively, or in conjunction, round any unintuitive numbers to the nearest whole number, giving you an approximate answer in your final calculation.